His Majesty. And uh, let's sing this out. Let's really lift the, lift the volume and let us worship God together. precious to him and if you're unsaved here this evening we want to give you a special welcome Jesus is interested in you interested in changing your life if tonight you'll trust him and ask him to be your own personal savior bigger than all my problems bigger than all my fears <laughs> Their 
Here's not a friend like the lowly Jesus, no not one, no not one. for me. Yes, he can. And you're not here by accident, but God wants to do something with you tonight. If you'll open up your life to him and trust him. Jesus came along and he touched me. This is the, the story of countless people in this church. Jesus touched us. 
and changed our lives. Jesus came along and he touched me. and we'll stand together to sing after the introduction. Okay, let's stand together. In Christ alone, and in my life, my song, Sing this, sing this now. In Christ alone, I hope it is fine. In my time, I sing my song. Sing your song, song it run. Learn to let your tears run and so. Christ alone, 
could distract us tonight but we can say Lord that we are so glad to be here to meet with the living God Father as we would just open up our hearts to you we would just pray that you would open yours to us and that we might receive those tokens of faithfulness we pray for each one that would have some part in tonight's service uh, that it would be so their part would be meaningful that as they would speak or as they would sing, that those words might be translated into spiritual language and that they might speak to, their, to our souls. We pray specifically for the individual, perhaps, who has come into the sanctuary tonight, weighed down with the burden of sin. It's a heavy burden tonight to carry. But we thank you that burdens and loads of guilt are lifted at Calvary. And we thank you that broken lives can be restored when we come as a sinner to Jesus. And so we ask you tonight that we might feel the very presence of a holy God. And might you minister very powerfully to our lives. In your great name we ask. Amen. Well, this uh, past week I was out visiting with a family. And uh, there was a girl called Ellie. And Ellie was just writing all of these poems uh, down just seemed to be coming off her mind and I asked Ellie if she wouldn't mind if she would consider writing a poem for this evening and within three quarters of an hour of perhaps leaving the house I got a message with the poem all written out and so Ellie's going to come and she's going to share with us the poem that she has written just for you tonight and I would love you just to sit up and to listen what God has put in her heart you want to come down here Ellie God is good, God is kind, God is loving and I'll tell you why. He sent his son from heaven to die and rose again for you and I. All you have to do is ask him in and he will take away your sin. So I hope that you all know today Jesus is the only way. Well, 
Well, we are so delighted this evening to have the Hannah family with us, and this day we'll ask them to come and bring the first two pieces. Thank you. Close fellowship up here. There's not much room between us. Me and Mark used to share a bed, but that was a long time ago. A bit close for comfort today. You know, we've a lot to be thankful for, haven't we? And here's a lovely old hymn. It's called Count Your Blessings. If you know the words, and if you have the words, feel free to put them up on the screen for everyone to sing along with us. This evening. When upon life's bills you are tempest tossed, when you are discouraged, thinking all is lost, count your many blessings, name them one by one, and it will surprise you what the Lord has done. Christ has promised you his wealth untold. Count your many blessings money cannot buy. Your reward in heaven or your home on high. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has done. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Conflict, whether great or small, do not be discouraged. God is over all. Count your many blessings, angels will attend. Help and comfort give you till your journey's end. Count your blessings, name them one by one. Count your blessings, see what God has. It's a song called A Heart That Will Never Break Again. I'm not sure if we've ever sang it here before. You know, maybe your heart's full of burdens and, you know, you're feeling the weight of your sin. You know, friend, you know, you can come to Christ tonight, have your sins forgiven. And, you know, one day you're going to have a heart that will never break again. And a heart that will never break again. I remember standing at 
mind at his bedside, and the tears filled up the wrinkles on his face. As I held his withered hand, he smiled and whispered, Son, I'm going to live in a better And I'll have eyes that will never fill with teardrops. And I'll have legs that will never ache with pain. And I'll have hands that will never age and wither. And a heart that will never one of you this evening we thank you so much for coming if you're visiting with us we give you a very special welcome and we do uh, give of course the Hannah family and our visiting speaker Simon Walsh from the Faith Mission just a very special welcome and I trust you feel at home among us I do remember there is supper for everyone afterwards and you can access that by going through this door to our back hall or else if you're going out you can make your way around the side do stay behind for a time of fellowship lovely to get to to know you and uh, do make yourself known uh, even to our elders and board members. Do you remember the announcements in this incoming week? Monday is the final flourish for the season at 8 p.m. That's our ladies' Bible study group, and there will be a time just of praise and worship and thanksgiving to God for all of his kindness, and then there will be desserts and various things afterwards. Then Tuesday is footsteps at 10 a.m., and then Wednesday is our Bible study and prayer meeting at 8pm. 
And then Friday at Cookstown Independent Methodist Church at 7.30 p.m. is a special recognition service for my father, who is retiring from full-time ministry uh, after 41 years. And you're very welcome to come and to join the Cookstown folk as they celebrate and look back at all God's faithfulness, but trust the Lord as they look into the future. There are uh, cards on the whole table. You can make use of those on the road out. Then our Sunday school and Bible class is at 10, 10, 10, 10 30 a.m. Our Sunday morning service, 11, 30 a.m. And then next Sunday evening, we are starting three Sunday uh, evening gatherings out at Cranston's Yard. It's uh, exactly the same place where we were during the COVID lockdowns. Three evenings, May the 26th, June the 2nd and June the 9th. And so the address is on these little cards. Please take them, hand them out to individuals. We would love to see as many as possible coming, sitting in their car and hearing God's word. Malcolm Barr, who used to uh, come to this church, will be along to testify. And God saved and delivered uh, Malcolm from a very, very challenging background and has done great things for him. And I will be bringing God's word. So do take those, hand them out to as many as possible. That's next Sunday evening at 6.30 p.m. If you have a copy of God's Word, could you turn with me to Jeremiah? Jeremiah chapter four, just a few verses from Jeremiah chapter four. <clears throat> Jeremiah chapter four and verse one. If thou wilt return, O Israel, saith the Lord, return unto me. And if thou wilt put away thine abominations out of my sight, then shalt thou not remove. And thou shalt swear the Lord liveth in truth and judgment and in righteousness, and the nations shall bless themselves in him, and in him shall they glory. For thus saith the Lord to the men of Judah and Jerusalem, Break up your fallow ground, and sow not among thorns. Just look at those last words, and sow not among thorns. Someone has said our lives are like a coin. You can only spend it once. And I just wonder, how have you spent your life? If we were reading about your life in a, a book format, how would it read? Because Jeremiah is calling Israel, calling them out for spending their lives sowing among thorns. And we know thorns, they hurt us. Thorns were worldly things that could not satisfy a pleasure that could not bring peace. They were sowing their lives in a fruitless exercise. And I just wonder this evening, is that how you have spent your life? And you have come this evening with a sense of longing for something to hope in, to set your life upon. Well, as you listen to Simon later, remember that hope and peace is not found in something. It's found in a relationship with someone, with the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. And so as you listen to Simon, don't sow your life any longer among the thorns. Listening to the devil's lies, allowing him to hurt you and to drag your soul to a lost eternity. Listen to the voice of Jesus this evening. Who's saying, come to me, come tonight, let me pick up the broken pieces and let me make something of your life and let me give you a peace and a purpose. Let us join together for our next hymn, um, our next hymn. Which is, I am so glad that our Father in heaven and then straight after the Hannah family are going to sing and then straight after I'm going to invite Simon up. Uh, to speak uh, to us. I am so glad that my Father in heaven will stand together after the introduction if you're able, if you're able to.
Now this last song we're going to sing is a lovely old gospel hymn. And actually Samuel, when he was speaking a little while ago, he mentioned this hymn. And you know, maybe you're in tonight and you're heavy with burdens. This is a lovely hymn called Burdens Are Lifted at Calvary. You know, we think of this, days are filled, aren't they, with sorrow and care. Hearts are lowly and drear. Friend, there's a place to come to, the foot of an old rugged cross, where Jesus bled and died. You know, he's alive today, lives in the power of an endless life. He's able to save you. He's able to keep you. We trust that your heart is touched as we sing this lovely old hymn. Days are filled with sorrow and care, hearts are lonely and drear. Burdens are lifted at Calvary, Jesus is very near. sleep. Sort of been given away what I'm going to say, but anyway, while working with the Faith Mission for a number of years, I uh, was placed in England for a wee while, 20 years exactly, and then last August we were able to move back home. But uh, I praise God that my earliest recollection had been working with sheep, and that's all I wanted to do was to work with sheep. And then the Lord obviously had different plans and led me and called me and, and so forth. And while in England, I find myself a lot of times working alongside farmers, uh, and particularly sheep farmers are they're calling you to, to give them a hand. And they were great opportunities to be able to witness and to share about the Lord Jesus. And then I w was working on an estate and a... Uh, for a number of years self-employed, but then they, they approached me, Simon, we want you to be our shepherd, would you come? 
And so latterly for a number of years, as well as evangelism and so forth, at charge over uh, 2,000, 2,000 ewes and then probably about five, 600 ewe lambs on top of that. And then they would have bought a lot of store lambs, another 2,500 store lambs in as well. Now, to do the job of a shepherd, you need a lot of important things. But as we see up here, probably the most important thing is that of a sheepdog. And I had three sheepdogs on the go uh, to go around all them sheep. But there are some very important traits we must have with a, a sheepdog. The first one there that will come up, we see they need to have an instinct. They need to have an instinct into wanting to round up sheep and work with sheep. I've had pups, yes, border collies, yes, out of working dogs, and they just have no interest in going round sheep. They want to play with them, they want to muck about. And so you need to have a sheepdog that has the instinct when it sees the sheep. I was given a pup eh, when we moved back there, September, October time, there was a pup going for free. And eh, when I take him out now, he's just mad to go round the sheep. Next one we see, speed. <coughs> and if you know about running after sheep, they're quite fast and they uh, hard to keep up with at times. And so you need to have a dog that's got a bit of speed about them. Next one, fitness wise. Some people say, why did you free sheep dogs? Well, if every day they're working with that amount of sheep, yes, they're fit, but they're just not that fit, especially in these warm days like this. After a couple of galleries, you can't, can't keep pushing them. While they have a fitness, we need it to spread the, the work out. We see the next trait, they need to have a bit of courage. When them ewes have got their young lambs, you know, they don't really want anything to, they want to protect them young lambs. And so a dog needs to have courage to face the, the ewe, to, to, to not run away as it were, scared all the time. See the next trait, that of being gentle. Yes, we want them to have courage, we want them to have strength when they're facing the ewes or, or even the, the, the rams, but there needs to be a gentleness. You know, if, if a little lamb needs help, you, you don't want a dog rushing in and, and going over the top of it. There needs to be a gentleness. They need to know when to hold back. But of all the traits, uh, we see that probably the most important one is that of obedience. If, if we were to have a sheep dog, and it did what it wanted. What do you think is going to happen? Anyone? What's going to happen if a sheep dog went and did what it wanted to do? Children, you know what happens. Go ahead. It'd be, be everywhere, wouldn't it? Let me put it like this. It would be a disaster. If a sheepdog went in and did what it wanted to do, just total chaos. Sheep running here, there, uh, and things, well, we've had that at times, and you just have to take a deep breath and go on. We go on there that in order for a sheepdog to be obedient, a sheepdog needs to be given a certain set of commands, okay? Now, how do we... Tell the sheep dog what they've got to do. Anybody like that guess? In what way do we tell the sheep dog what they've got to do? A what, sir? A whistle. A whistle. Very good. And so the first thing every day when I get up, the first thing I do is put this around my neck. Because it's an absolute disaster, not only when the sheep are not, or certain the sheepdog isn't obedient, but if I go without this, and you can hear my voice, and if you've got a sore throat, there's no way you're going to shout at a sheepdog, and they're going to hear you when it's far away. And so we need a whistle. And what do you do with a whistle? He's all sleeping already, yeah. You blow at it, do you? You make all silly noises, don't you? So, we have to have a whistle, as you can hear, it's quite a, quite a high pitch. 
They could hear from far away. So if I just stood in the field and started blowing, does the sheep dog know what to do? Yeah? No? Anyone else? No, of course not. It's got to be taught what each command is. I need three volunteers. Three volunteers. Don't be shy. You can come up. Yeah, come ahead. Any more? You want to come? Yeah, come ahead. One more. Right. Well, you've answered all the questions. You better come. <laughs> Very good. Right. So, I've got three whistles here. Okay? That's well, all I want you to do is to make some noises. Okay? So you take one. They've all been sterilized. They're clean. Don't worry. Don't worry about that. There you go. Right. So you just, you get them in your mouth there. And you just, as if you're commanding a dog and what they've got to do. Yeah, do it the other way. Go the other way. Yeah, that's it. And you put that in your mouth. Yeah, just in between your lips. Like that. And then go. <laughs> they're not dummy. They're, they're exactly the same as me. Between your lips, put your tongue behind it. Blow, blow gently, blow gently. Oh, nearly, it's good to be about nice. You nearly got it. Oh, it's not simple, sure it's not. No, see, not only does the sheepdog need to learn what the whistle is, you have to learn how to use the whistle. So, oh, well done. You're the first one, and I've done this in a few places, even cooks time. And <laughs> nobody was able to do it. You're getting there. You nearly there, nearly there. Thank you very much. There you go. It's not easy. Sure it's not. You can put them in. Thanks, you can go and sit down now. Well, that was just a, a wee taster there for you. So you're going to have to buy a whistle now and, and learn how to do it. But what are the basic commands? First one we have there is come by and have been very kind to you and have told you which way that is. That's for the dog to go clockwise. Next one, away. Very simple, anti-clockwise. Anybody want to have a guess what the next one might be? Do you know? Yes, your hands up. We go. No. All right. Next one is stand. So while we're calling them away and to come by, we need them to stop at times, don't we? We need them to stand. Next one. There's times then we don't want them running around very fast, but we want them to walk on slowly to follow the sheep, weaving in behind them. Next one. We want them at times to look back because sometimes the dogs leave, maybe a ewe, maybe a lamb, and I have to command the dog to go back and to bring it with the rest. So there you go, there's a wee bit, of, wee bit about the sheepdog. But we go on to our next slide. We're thinking about the obedience of the dog, but what about us? In what ways do we show obedience? The first one that comes up, the first thing that came to my mind, Nick, there should be a picture with that, is our parents. That's a very familiar picture, isn't it? Hey, there's a pointed finger and there's not a very happy face. Now, we are supposed to obey our, to obey our parents, aren't we? But do we always obey our parents? Don't be looking at your parents for the answer. You, you tell me. No, well, unfortunately, unfortunately, we don't always over, obey our parents. We need to be trained to do that, don't we? There's a lot of times we have to be trained to be obedient. Well, just think about that. Keep that in your mind for, for in a few moments. We go on to the next slide. Not only are we to be obedient to parents, but we see that we are even to be obedient to those who rule over us, those who have responsibility, whether it's in government, maybe even employers. I think that might be the next one. Yep. When you're in school, you've got to show obedience to your teachers. You know, if you went to school and did what you want, 
Would the teachers need to be there? No, not really. You have to go to school and you have to be obedient. You have to listen to the teachers and learn to be taught. We have employers for going, working for somebody. There's got to be a sense of obedience in all that the employer wants you to do in the workplace. We see another way in which we show obedience, and that is with signs. You're driving on the road. Mommy, daddy, or, or your grandparents, eh, there's, a, there's a 30 mile an hour a speed sign and they're going 60 mile an hour are they being obedient to the sign not quite and so there's signs up there should be a picture with that and there's signs for our safety and those signs are up there but in order for us to be safe how do the signs work what do we have to do what do we have to be Obedient, that's right. Those signs are there, but it don't mean one thing unless we're obedient and we follow those signs. Go on to the next slide. We thought about being obedient to parents and government and teachers and employers and to all the safety signs that are up. That's important, but what we see in our life, there's an obedience that is far more important. And we see there in the Bible in Acts chapter 5 verse 9. We ought to obey God rather than men. Now let me just say, and I'm not, I can't go into any detail, but let me just say this does not mean we are disobedient to our parents, to government, disobedient to, to, to safety, road safety signs or anything like that. That does not give us an excuse to be disobedient. But what we see is that there's a, an obedience that is far more important in our lives and that is obedience to God. But there's a problem, isn't there? And we've already thought about it in the slide before. And that problem is that we're not obedient to God. So often in our lives, we want to ignore God, we want to reject God, we want to deny God, we, we, we want to question what God said. And remember Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. I'm sure you've all learned there in Genesis. What did Satan do whenever he went to Eve? He caused her to question what God had said. And therefore that led them to be disobedient. And whenever we're disobedient to God. What does the Bible call that? Any of you young ones know what that is? Do you know? Sin. Sin well done. That's brilliant. People... Think of sin in other ways, and yet simply, that's what sin is, is when we have been disobedient and we have rebelled against God. And so there's just a few things as we think about being obedient to God. We see it as a priority, it should be a picture there. We see that in our lives, the priority of our obedience ought always be to God and to God only. Now there are people who will ask, well, I can't see God, I can't hear God. How do I know how I to be obedient to God? Well, very simply, we have the picture there of the Bible. We have God's revealed word. We have it freely printed for us. We have it in our hands. We can have it in our home without any fear. And God has been gracious to us in that we have this and we can read it. And there when we read the Bible, the Word of God, we, we see that in order for us to be obedient, we must make it a priority in our lives. Then we see our next thing, and that is the pattern. Who shows us how we ought to be obedient? Well, very simply this evening, we see in the Lord Jesus that he is the perfect example of what it is to be obedient to God. To his father. Look at what Jesus said in John 6 verse 38. I came down from heaven not to do my own will. But the will of him that sent me. There are some dogs that are strong will. And it takes a long long time to break that will. And to get that dog to submit to the commands that you want. And that is the same us. You and I. We want to do what we want. Go our way. 
And yet we see in Jesus that he, even as the Son of God, even as the one who did no sin, the priority for him when he came to this earth was to do the will of the Father, of him that sent me. In Jesus we have the perfect example. You know, if you're here tonight and you're looking to somebody else, you're going to be let down. You're not going to see, even in myself, I profess to be a Christian and I testify to that, even in me, you're not going to see a perfect example of obedience to God, but you do when you see the Lord Jesus. Then we see the third thing, we see the practice of that. There ought to be a priority in our lives to obey God. We have his word, we read it, we see the pattern in the Lord Jesus. That was his priority. And the practice is this, that if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Obedience is a, an expression, is a, 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 a sign that we love the Lord, that we want to be obedient. If, if my dog went out with me every day, spent time and just continually, continually was being disobedient and was doing the wrong thing when it was commanded, what would that say to me? That that dog has not listening, that dog uh, has, has not bonded with me, it has not come under uh, to, to, to want to, to please me in a sense. And that's the same with us. If we live our lives in disobedience, there are those who call themselves Christians, but yet they live their lives far away from the way God wants them to live. Does that really show uh, that we love him? Well, that's the word of God there. That's the words of Jesus. If you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Go on to the next slide. Should come up, hopefully. Question is, as we've looked at that, have you obeyed God? The next bit that comes up there, we have the Ten Commandments, and I put the Ten Commandments only. Because when you chat with folk, and, and maybe you young ones as well, the idea might be, well, if I keep the Ten Commandments, then that means I'm being obedient to God. And there's a lot of people try to live like that. And some people will even say, well, you know, yes, I, I, I failed to keep that one, but I've kept the other nine. Does that mean we've been obedient to God? If we've broken one commandment, of course not. Because we've fallen short, we, we, we haven't o obeyed perfectly and lived as God would want us to. And so I put that there as an axiom. Is, the, is it the Ten Commandments only? Well, we see that there is a, something else that we must obey. Uh, the next one. The Gospel. This is what a lot don't realise. <laughs> People talk about the Gospel as being an invitation. The Gospel as being a, a gift. And that is right. But I want to share with you tonight, and, and you young ones, please try to remember this as you think about the obedience of the sheepdog, that the gospel is also a command that is and must be obeyed. Yes, the gospel is good news. Yes, the gospel tells us about Jesus Christ and how he died for us, for our sin, for all the disobedience for all the wrong that we've done there on the cross, Jesus took my disobedience, my rebellion on himself so that I could be forgiven. That's great news. That's the gospel. But what good is that gospel if I'm going to diso be disobedient and not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? And so we see in the gospel it's a command. Jesus said to the religious leader Nicodemus, ye must be born again. The Bible, when Paul was in the, the jail and Philippian jailer asked, what must I do to be saved? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. There was a command there. And with that command, there was to be an obedience. We see there in 1 John 3, verse 23. 
And this is his commandment. This is God's commandment. That we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ. And that's very simply that the only place that we can come to tonight, as we close off thinking about obedience, is that God has given us his son. And the command of the gospel is that we must come and believe in his son. Because there is no other saviour. There is no other way if, in order for you and I to know what it is to have forgiveness of sin. And um, There's one more. Uh, and we must come to the cross. We must come to the Lord Jesus who there on the cross died so that we could know the forgiveness of sin. We can know forgiveness. And with that forgiveness, we can know a freedom that we could never know in living a life of disobedience and rebellion against God. Whenever we know forgiveness of sin, when we're right with God, we have a freedom. And the Bible talks about us having a joy, having a peace, having a contentment, having a hope, the things that we cannot find in this world. Yes, we might live how we want to live. Yes, we might fulfill all the desires we want to fulfill. But we'll never know any of that freedom until we have come and been obedient to God's command that we must believe on his son, Jesus Christ. And so the challenge to you that are young, to you that are older, have you obeyed God as you leave this building tonight? Have you believed the gospel? Of Jesus Christ. Are you trusting in him? Because as we said only in him. Can we know what it is. To be forgiven. The Bible. Or, or, the, the Bible talks about sin. It talks about our disobedience. And yes as parents. We try to train our young ones. And yes young ones. You, you grow up and, and you learn. But let me say today. That there's nothing. In ourselves. That will draw us to Jesus. We'll just keep going our own way. But God speaks to you tonight through his Holy Spirit. And if he's speaking to you. You must listen. And you must be obedient. Because to carry on in disobedience. Is one day to face the punishment. And that is all eternity. In hell. Away for all eternity from God, from the life of God, from our Saviour Jesus Christ. And so there is a consequence to the disobedience to the gospel. And so tonight I just trust that through this simple talk and related to the sheepdog, you may come in your own heart and long and desire, God, I want to be obedient to you. And not to me or anyone else. May God help you tonight to come and to trust in the Lord Jesus. Thank you so much, Simon. Let us sing our final hymn. Just two verses. What can wash away my stain? What Simon has shared this evening is for you. It's not for the person beside you or behind you. This message is for you. And as Simon has said, you have a decision what you will do with the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to sing two verses, standing to sing, and then Mr. Billy Parker will bring our meeting to a close and giving the Lord thanks just for the food that's been prepared. And um, What can wash away my stain? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. <coughs>
gracious Father, we thank thee for your presence amongst us this evening. We thank you, Lord, for the ministry and song from the from our group here this evening, Lord, and for those messages. We thank you for the poem that was so so in, in, enlightening to us regarding sin. We thank you, Lord, for the ministry, even of our brother tonight on the sheep dog. And Lord, we just thank you tonight that Jesus loves us. Yes. This I know, for the Bible tells me so. But thank you, Lord, you loved us enough to die for everyone in this congregation this evening. Lord, as our brother has said to us tonight, it's all about obedience. That's what we do with the Saviour. <coughs> and I just pray for someone that the Lord Jesus is calling tonight, whether young or whether they're old, I pray that they'll take that step of faith yes. and say, Christ for me, no matter what the cost, I'm taking him tonight. I pray that you'll bless the word. We thank you for this time for all the families that are here in this congregation tonight. Thank you, Lord, you died for every one of them. And we pray today, Lord, that we would indeed live lives before them would teach them the things of God. I pray you'll bless our fellowship together tonight. We thank you for the food that has been um, set out for us. We thank you for your provision. And we pray, Lord, that we will thank thee for everything that you give to us, not only your salvation, but for our daily food. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. <coughs> 